go to 404. I'm on track. I'm on track. I know how many there are now. There's 404 episodes of this show. You can binge it anytime you want. You can use it like Netflix. Let's get into it, though. Joe Rogan, Duncan Trussell, they're talking about the continued censorship of RFK Jr., the presidential candidate who is running on truth and integrity. That's how I like to phrase it myself. I know a lot of people have different views of him, but in this clip, that's what they're going to be talking about. And then I'm going to be showing you a couple of tweets from Jordan Peterson and RFK himself because the censorship has not stopped at Theo Vaughn's podcast and Mike Tyson's podcast. It continues, but let's get into that in a second. I have to bring you to the store. You guys know about the store. We have the Great Resist. You've heard about the Great Reset. Join the Great Resist instead. We are going to allow you to eat meat and drive a gas car and have gas, gas stoves, and we don't require you to eat crickets whatsoever. The Great Resist, it's a much better deal. Soul Not For Sale, we have that clothing line. Anti-WF, we have that line as well. And the Great Resist, like I just showed you. All of those are available at IamCoachCollin.com. The site again is IamCoachCollin.com. And if you're someone who's purchased something from that site already, you are greatly appreciated. Thank you so, so much. And before I get started, like the video, hit that like button. Let's get right into it. Always forget to ask for the likes. Always forget. Let's get into it, guys. Or just on YouTube. On YouTube. Yeah. It's, it's really fucked up, man. In all fairness, I think YouTube would take that down. I think they changed it. I think they're changing, aren't they? Did I, did I dream that YouTube was like la loosening up so we could watch those videos again on YouTube? Really? I could be wrong, but I feel like there was some shift in their censorship model that was happening, but I could be wrong about that. Well, it's not when it comes to RFK Jr. They're, they're deleting his old podcasts. They deleted one from Theo Vaughn from a year ago, and they had deleted one from Hot Boxing with Mike Tyson, which is more than a year Weird. ago too. I did not know that. They just did it. What the fuck? They just started doing that. That not that illegal if someone's running for president? to You can't do that, right? I don't know what you could say that it's because of misinformation. And this is, you know, because he talks about vaccines. And, you know, he talks about, uh, he was an environmental attorney before he, you know, was anything. And, you know, his whole thing was trying to hold companies accountable for what they're doing by ruining the environment and lying about it. And for them to take that guy and say, you can't do that with other stuff. You can't talk about other stuff. Like, how come no one wants to hear him out? How come no one wants to hear him out with, it, with that book, The Real Anthony Fauci, is fucking terrifying. And if it's not true, why isn't he getting sued? You know, if that book is true, if all the things that he's saying and he has references for everything, if it's all accurate, we should all read that book. Everyone should read that book. Right. Because if it's true, it's terrifying. You, I, it, you've been captured by an industry that's forced you into, into becoming a source of income for them. Dude, censorship is has this component of condescension in it that is mm -hmm. really, like, that to me is the, the worst part. Is Essentially, you're saying you're too dumb to parse this information in a rational way. Yeah. So we're gonna protect you from it because it's like- Hold on, I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna start that clip again, just from that, that section. But I just wanted to show you guys this. When I talk about the censorship continuing, RFK tweeted out, what do you think? Said so social media platforms uh, censor presidential candidates. My conversation with Jordan B. Peterson deleted from YouTube. Luckily, you can watch it here on Twitter. If you have Twitter, you can go to Twitter. You can watch the conversation. Decide for yourself. Jordan Peterson weighed in as well. He said, now YouTube has taken it upon, him, upon itself to actively interfere with the presidential election campaign. And then he adds Robert F. Kennedy Jr., so they've removed his interview with um, RFK, Jordan Peterson's. Now, they're saying, a lot of people say it's because of, you know, the health misinformation, right? Um, 
But then other people are saying it's because they had a conversation about transgender teens. So it's really up in the air for what it's really about. And it's getting a little ridiculous to keep silencing or keep acting like this person doesn't exist and keep taking away all of the pla all of the interviews where he's got to talk at length is ridiculous. And I understand that they have policies. I get that completely. But at the same time, when it is somebody who's running for president, you do have to hear all his thoughts, the good and the bad. You can't just hear the little snippets and this and that. You have to hear him talk at length about subjects. Because here's the thing, whether it's them talking about transgender teens and you know whatever they were touching on there, or it's about health in terms of you know vaccines or whatever, which, whichever topic it is, you have to be able to hear what he thinks about it because there's Americans that are for what he's saying and against what he's saying. And you have to be informed either side. Like, I'm not saying everyone that's for him should get to hear him talk. Everybody who's against him should get to hear him talk. If you don't like him, you don't like what he has to say, you should be able to hear him talk. That way you have a good case and a good argument as to why you don't like him and why you won't endorse him and why you won't vote for him. But when they do stuff like this, it's it's I, I don't even understand it. You know, and to, to look at it like it's not interference, I'm going to go back to the Joe Rogan clip right now, but to look at it like it's not interference is crazy. This is clearly, it's it's not all on the up and up. And I get it. They have a loophole because they can say, listen, we have policies when it comes to misinformation about COVID. I get that 100%. So I get that they have that. But at the same time, there should be another loophole where they have to or should be allowed to have this information up because it's so important for the American people. And I get it. It's a private company and they don't have to do anything for the American people. They have to worry about their bottom line and their advertisers. I get that. But at the same time, you know, he is a presidential candidate and you have to know what he thinks about things. You just you just have to. You have to know what Trump thinks. You have to know what Biden thinks. You have to know what Vivek thinks. You have to know what they all think. Or else, how are you making your decisions? It's, I don't know, man. I don't know. It's wild. It's wild that they feel like they can just do that. And uh, it's not even a feel-like thing because they're doing it. They're actively doing it right now. All right, let's uh, finish off this clip. There's three more minutes in this clip. And they're talking about censorship in general and what censorship feels like to the people who are going through it, which is you and I. Let's get into it. That book. Everyone should read that book. Right. Because if it's true, it's terrifying. You, I, it, you've been captured by an industry that's forced you into, into becoming a source of income for them. Dude, censorship is has this component of condescension in it that is mm -hmm. really, like, that to me is the, the worst part. Is Essentially, you're saying... You're too dumb to parse this information in a rational way. Yeah. So we're going to protect you from it because it's like a poison. It's going to infect your brain and we have to protect you. Mm -hmm. That is really like, like, first of all, if you do, like, that's bad parenting in yeah. general. You know what I mean? Like the idea would be that you like teach your kid to confront false things, mm -hmm. learn why they're not real. And then instead of like trying to prevent your kid from seeing like everything, you yeah. know, obviously, I mean, I don't obviously like I'm not letting my kid watch Blade Runner or some shit like that. But just that if you get too overprotective with your kids, like try to hide death from them, for example, yeah. that sort of thing. Like you got to trust we can deal with it. That it's, it's safe for us to encounter all forms of information. Well, the problem is what from the time they're real little, you're lying to them. Santa Claus is going to come to bring you all the toys. He's going to come Claus. down the chimney. And he's going to magically yeah. appear. Yeah. Just teach your kid what the word egregore means, and you can do Santa Claus ethically. What's egregore? Egregore is like the name for like a thing that exists within the minds of a lot of people. It's an egregore. So like, if enough people believe in something, does it have a material reality? Not necessarily. But within the psychic 
mind space. It's real. It's right, there. Like Santa Claus is a thing. Yeah, an egregore. Santa Claus is an egregore. There's no, obviously, there's no real Santa Claus, but there is a very vivid living entity within the interconnected minds of everyone who believes in it. That's an egregore. The problem is if you tell your kid that Santa's an egregore, and then your kid's going to tell all the kids at school, and then you're the asshole. That's the problem. I'll be honest, Joe. I have not told my kids Santa's an egregore. I just thought of it. <laughs> I'm like, maybe I'll do egregore this Christmas. But yeah, but you're there's right. There's like a battle. Like, you, you, you get kids together, you know, and, and you, ask, right. you talk to parents. Like, hey, have you done the Santa Claus talk? No. Like, how old are they? They're five, five and six. Like, if you get to that age where you're like, okay, when are you going to tell these kids? When do you tell? When do you tell them? They don't like it when you tell them either. They get very sad. So is that like, is that what these people like think they, about us? But it's weird that they grow up with a lie. That's what I don't like. You grow up with a lie. It's yeah. a stupid lie. And you, you convince a child that this lie that we all have mutually agreed upon, it's fucking kind of, Santa Claus is kind of dangerous because it, it sets people up at yeah. a very early age for the reality that, the, the possibility, rather, that everything you believe in is bullshit. It's misinformation, Joe. E but everything you believe in is propaganda. It's propaganda by your parents to get you to be good. Yeah. You better be good. You, you better, better be nice. Better than hell. Yeah. At least you're not doing the Santa hell thing. Santa Claus is coming to, to town. town. He knows when you are sleeping. He, he knows, knows when, when you're, you're awake. awake. He knows if you've been bad or good, so be good for goodness sake. Yeah, He's so breaking child predator laws <laughs> by monitoring kids. <laughs> you know, as they were talking about this, you know, I had the thought, um, it was just a weird thought. I'm like, you can't spell, you can't spell Santa Claus without NSA. <laughs> it made me laugh. <laughs> well, because, you know, they're talking about, you know, he knows when you're sleeping, knows when you're awake, he knows, you know, if you've been bad or good. You know, it just kind of made me think of the surveillance of it all. And I don't know if they did this on purpose, but while they're talking about Santa Claus and, and the fact that Santa Claus isn't real and that's what parents tell their kids and grow up on a lie, that's kind of what we go through. When it comes to things like what YouTube is doing with RFK Jr. and what the media does as a whole, you know, they kind of set us up with this Santa Claus, you know, whether it's a president or, you know, how food really works and what foods are actually bad for you and good for you. It's like they, they set us up with all these different types of Santa Claus pillars that we believe to be true. And then we get real information and we realize it's all been a lie. And then all of a sudden, you know, the, 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 the glitter of it all, you know, of Christmas, of the holiday season, all gets very dull because now we know what's really going on. It's really just adults buying things. And it's kind of like when you look at society, you know, you grow up and you feel like changes, and I won't say change is impossible, but you grow up with these very grandiose ideas about how good people are and how good things are and how, you know, the government really works in our best interest. You just have the regular ideas. And then as you start learning things, like it all gets duller and duller and you're like, it's actually just a bunch of adults buying things and it's really about the economy. And you start to learn that's what it's all about, whether it's government or food or health or, you know, like, that's just what it all is. It's weird. But not to say that you can't change things, you can't impact things positively. You absolutely can. It's just what it's all about becomes clear. It's like the veil gets lifted at a certain point. For us, in our generation, it was YouTube. YouTube came along and you were able to just search things up and hear people's views and this and that. People talking about aliens and the food industry and the medical industry and just all sorts of things and then all and, and religion and it's all sorts of stuff and then all of a sudden you're just like what's really going on i've been lied to this whole time i've been i've been the five-year-old that they've been telling me about santa claus and how real he is and how i have to be good or you know and i myself i had my own santa claus reveal in school i failed i failed grade six and seven and for some reason, they kept passing me. And I started realizing, I'm like, oh, this isn't real. 
Like they're just kind of aging me through this and it doesn't really matter what I do. So I just kind of didn't do anything the very last year of elementary school. And then I went to high school and I was like, oh, well, I guess you don't have to do anything. You can just do what you want. And I, that was kind of my own lifting of the veil. And then I got into YouTube and I got into, you know, studying symbolism and and, and I got into uh, studying the Masons and this is just aliens and all just like started uh, rabbit holing very deep. I just started seeing the world for what it was. And I was lucky. I was lucky for that because a lot of people, you know, they learn that in their 30s and it's earth shattering. You know, it's a sad thing to have to go through when you're very old, when you're much older. I see it happen with older people. I'm seeing it happen with an older person right now. There's certain things that they're waking up to and they're like 60 years old and they're like, what's going on? It's really weird. It's like watching Mr. Rogers have like a, a little break and be like, oh, geez, you know, and start seeing the world well, like that movie. Um, what's the movie that I haven't seen that I should see? They live. You put on the glasses and you're just like, oh. It's all about corporations. It's all about money. It's all about greed. But it's not all about that. It's just that the people who are in charge are all about that. There are other people in the world. I like to think myself included, maybe even you your, yourself included, that aren't about greed and, and the money and, you know, and the deception. You're about truth and you want to bring light into the world. You want to do good things. I love a good Duncan Trussell episode, man. I'm telling you, good palate cleanser. I wanted him to interview Tucker Carlson for the, the 2000th episode, but I'm glad I got Duncan instead. I, I like to see two friends in deep conversations. It's literally what my life has been built on. So I absolutely love it. Like the video. Once again, like the video. It helps boost us out of the shadow realms. You have no idea how much I appreciate it, how much it helps the channel how much it helps us grow. So if you could do that, it's much, much appreciated. And uh, let me know what you think. What do you think about the whole Santa Claus, you know, for kids versus society for adults? What do you think about that comparison? You think that's a real thing? Have you felt that in your own life? Like how old were you when you felt it? I was young. I was quote unquote lucky enough or unlucky enough because it led to a lot of depression that I found out when I was young. But, you know, maybe you're someone you found out at 40. What was that like? You know, let me know in the comments. Other than that, I am out.